Hey everyone, um, welcome. It is just me and Jason Crafton today who's running the stream. Uh, Jason is not here and neither, um, yeah, Jason's not here and uh, it's just me. But today we're gonna be going over one of the uh, challenges for the cyber range. If you have done it, great. If you ha weren't able to complete it, that's okay. The challenge will be available uh, after for less points, um, but you can still do it and get something if you're interested. Uh, this won't be a very long stream, so if you have questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. And I don't know if I can see the chat. If people are chatting or throw something in there and let me see if I can see it because I don't see anything yet. Um, let me check. Okay, cool. I am seeing chat messages now. Hey, everyone. Okay, great. So, <laughs> awesome. And we can see my screen here. The Like I said, we're doing the last great zip. I already have it uh, downloaded. So, the idea is that the zip file has a password on it. Let me go here. So I already downloaded it. It's this flag.zip file here. And let's see, if we just try and unzip that zip. There you're gonna see um, the file has a flag.png and then it's asking for the password, but I don't have the password. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I use John the Ripper. I think you might be able to use uh, Hashcat. I'm not entirely sure, but I know there's more than one tool that you can use for this um, specifically. So whichever way worked for you, cool. Whichever one you prefer. Um, I just know, or let's see, I just like this specific one because it's just what I'm familiar with. So first I'm gonna do zip to John and I'm gonna take the zip file and it's going to give me a hash for it. So I'm just gonna name it hash. And cool, let's see. We can cat and just make sure that it's in there um, and see what we see, which is obviously a lot. So the flags somewhere in there. Now, this is where I was having problems with, and hopefully, I don't have problems live, but I might. So we'll see if this works. Uh, so I'm gonna do John and then I'm gonna do a word list. Here equals user, I think it's, yeah. Share, um, and then I'm just putting the file path to where my word list is stored. So let me think here. Oh gosh, there's so many. Okay. Clear actually. All right, so let's do John, word list, share. I think it's in, uh, duh, 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 duh. if I can remember the file, where it's specifically stored. Share. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, this, so in the chat, um, it is a VM. So I was, I have, I was talking um, before about, I have a, one of those like super wide monitors. So if I share my screen, um, it's big and it looks awful on this stream, but I am just doing this in a VM and specifically sharing that VM. So let's see. No. Let me see really quick where it is. Actually, it might just be share word list. And new. No. User. Now I'm using my good Googling skills. No, it's definitely share word list. Okay, there we go. So we're going to try and see if we can get it out of the, the specific rock you file. I think this is where I was 
coming into problems, but also, so if I said John um, word list, and then we're gonna just try and see if I type in hash here. And no pass, oh, okay, cool, that did work. See, the other problem I was having, I'm not sure if anybody else um, had the same problem. Oh no. But for whatever reason, it like wouldn't, it couldn't identify the type. So it just kept cycling through all these different hash types. So let's see here if it, oh no, okay. I also did, so I did dash dash um, format equals uh, PK zip. And that helped it so that it wasn't, um, it didn't like go through all of these types and it specifies the type. Cool. Now, yeah, someone's, um, John the Ripper, that is what I'm using. I know it's old. I, I feel like I've brought up John the Ripper on TikTok before and I get roasted for it, um, but it works. So whichever one works for you um, works great. Now let's see. I wonder why, let me see if I do this way. Da, 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 da. John the Ripper, hash, that's a show. Okay, cool. So I basically ended up doing um, John the Ripper, hash, dash, dash, show. And then we can see this um, flag. So this here, you can see flag.png. And then it gives us the password. So this is the password here. Now let's try it on the actual zip file. Oh, let's see, unzip, flag.zip. Okay, we're gonna paste and there we go. Okay, cool. Now, I don't think, uh, flag, uh, I don't think it will show us this way. Yeah, so let's see if I actually open the file. See, I didn't get this far yesterday when I was doing it. I like got it unzipped and I was like, cool, I got the password. <laughs> so I probably should have done it all the way, um, but that's fine. We can open up the, wow, that is, that's great handwriting. I did not write that. So that is how we got um, the flag. So if you're confused because that was a little chaotic explanation, let me know and I can clear up some things. Let me go through the comments here. That's an error you get when you do wordless instead of. Interesting. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. That's cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, definitely. Does anybody have questions? I'm just wondering if this webinar will be available after so we can get the commands. Yes, definitely. Um, it'll be available. All of our streams, I think, afterwards get posted. I don't know if it's going to be automatically, um, but it will get posted on our YouTube after so you can see the commands that I did. Um, yeah. And is there a place you can download the same VM tool so I can follow along? Yes, this is um, not like a fancy version or anything of Kali. It's pretty bare bones. So if you have, like I use a VMware Workstation, um, but there are other options to VMware Workstation that you can use if you want to. Um, and I mean, there's also other ways you can run Kali aside from putting it on a hypervisor, but yeah, I just use like the one that's available on their uh, website. And then I added it to here and it's really not like fancy. I think John comes uh, preloaded on Kali. So I didn't have to install any extra tools to be able to use it. And what's nice is the word lists too also come on Kali. Um, and I think they come on Parrot if like you prefer that version, whichever one works for you. Um, but yeah, the word lists are also available 
already pre-installed on the VM. So the Rock U, I think, comes in a zip file. So you do have to unzip it. But other than that, um, you should have all the tools you would need right on the standard version of like the Kali implementation. So yeah, cool. All right, is there any other questions? I know this was like a very short stream and I might be boring because I'm the only person, um, but uh, yeah, they, they, they bullied me into doing this by myself. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so I, I worked on that last night, um, but that wasn't a, too bad of a challenge, although the flag is really um, unfortunate looking. <laughs> How do I access these challenges? Um, these challenges are a part of our cyber range. And I think, let me see if I can put the, I'll put the link because it's on our anti-siphon site. And then we have the cyber range. And I, I don't want to quote you the wrong prices. I think it's $30 a month. And then you have access to like all of these challenges. And there's a ton of them. And then there's a scoreboard so you can see your ranking with other people. I think it's, I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, and they range from like very kind of easy, maybe some like recon type challenges to some more difficult challenges. Like um, we had, I had like a file upload vulnerability before. And uh, those are also available on this channel as well. If you just want to see what we're the, the walkthroughs. So we're going to be doing these every other Wednesday just to retire some challenges that have been around for a while and then hopefully add some new challenges that people can, you know, poke around at. Some, some challenges on here are more difficult than others, as I said before, but you can also see like the higher the point value, the more difficult the challenge is supposed to be, but it'll also tell you how many teams solved that challenge. And so some of them will have like, there's one here called Mystery C2 and it's got 325 points, but it's only been solved by 13 teams. So uh, that's how I kind of look at see like, okay, how difficult really is this challenge aside from the point values? Because if you see uh, a 350 point, um, well, and then I guess it's, if it's a newer challenge, it won't have as many solves. But if you see someone uh, challenge on here that has less solved, peeps, like sol team solved it, then um, that might be a difficult challenge or a new challenge, which is great. So which challenge did you just complete? I did the last great zip file. So that was the last challenge that I completed. Some things that also that I've noticed about the cyber range going through these is because when I applied to work at BHIS, I had uh, to do some of these challenges and submit and like show, basically I wrote like a report on how I solved these challenges. And then some of them I solved again a lot later and they were changed a little bit. So I don't know how common that is that these challenges get tweaked a little bit. Um, but that has happened before to me at least, but maybe I forgot something. I don't know. There's, there's sometimes that I feel like they change them to mess with me too. So that's always a possibility. Um, yeah. How do you get answers when stumped? There is a little hint button I, I can share again. Sorry. There is a little hint button that you can use that might give you, uh, let's see here. So this one is like mining hero. And if you were like totally stumped, well, I guess this one already gave you a freebie hint. Most of them don't. So you can hit this little question mark and then it'll give you one hint with no penalties. And then you can unlock a hint if you need another one, but it will take from that that point value that you could get. So like this one here, it's 350. So you can kind of take the hit. Um, but yeah, sometimes in, and I, you do get stumped. I mean, I definitely got stumped on a few of these. Um, I'm really not great at like SQL injections. I've just, I don't know. My brain is not, <laughs> doesn't really comprehend them that well. Cause I don't know if you've ever been in like a math class where the, the test, like your homework answers are like, oh, super easy. And then you get to the test and it's completely different. And that's how I feel like SQL injections are because 
I'm like, yeah, I'll watch the videos and do them. And then I'll get to the challenge. I'm like, none of this stuff is anything that I learned. So yeah, that's me. Oh yeah. Haircut fish said that the discord, um, discord has a room dedicated to the cyber range too. So maybe you can, uh, ask for help there too. Um, so that's always a, a good option. Um, but yeah, I, I like to watch people, even if you're not doing the challenges yourself, I like to watch the challenges, even on like John Hammond's channel, see the hack the box, uh, challenges he'll go through because then I might learn something from there that I can apply to either a different CTF or a different challenge, or maybe in real life, depending if, um, a test has it that hasn't happened yet. I have not been on a, a web app test yet. So I've only done internals. So I haven't really done a lot of like file upload vulnerabilities and things like that, but maybe in the future. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be careful. You pay for hints. Yeah. I think the first one is free. M most of the time, I think you could come across some challenges that might not have a, a free hint. Um, but sometimes, you know, I don't feel bad for taking hits because I do myself. <laughs> um, and there's some, some good ones too, if you're interested in cloud. So there are some cloud challenges. I think we might be retiring one of the cloud boxes coming up, but we'll tell you a week before we actually do the walkthrough and retire it or just kind of make the points less so that you have time to do it for the full amount of points. Yeah, OG Captain Crunch said that's why I like to read someone's walkthrough after finished uh, CTF. Yeah, I I like doing that too because sometimes they'll they'll solve it a completely different way and you learn. So that's another great way to do it. Let me see if there's any questions I missed here. Uh, I think it's pronounced Patrick. Are you guys about to wrap up? Are you still going? Just got here. I, we have already solved the challenge, so now I'm just answering questions. But yeah, Brian says the meta CTF range is a great way to demonstrate the skills. Um, you may have learned from, uh, I think that's try hack me and hack the box. Yes, also agree. It is different. So like these challenges might have a couple steps, especially as you go into the harder ones, um, but like hack the box, you have to like, sometimes you have to chain together a bunch of different exploits to end up getting the flag, which is great. Um, but sometimes you just want to like, like this is really great for beginners and there are some more intermediate uh, challenges there too. But yeah, I like it. It's different than hack the box and a little different than try hack me. Um, so if you're doing all of them, you're going to definitely learn stuff. Uh, the cyber range also comes with some of the anti-siphon courses that is true so you do get some months of cyber range i think that might depend on if it's a full paid course or uh pay what you can see this is why we need jason here because he has all the answers i just um do the do the walkthrough and the hacking part <laughs> and he knows so, you know the, yeah. Uh, so if you pay full price for anti-siphon courses, you get uh, one year of access to the cyber range. Okay. Uh, there are there are some pay what you can classes that we offer as well, like John's mm -hmm. stock class and his uh, miter attack class. Um, the, those classes, if you do it, pay what you can, and you pay less than what the full price is. Um, depending upon what price you pay you get up to six months of access to this. Yeah, that's what I couldn't remember. I was like, I know six months, but I was like, I don't know if it's more than six months. Um, so that's good. Thank you for letting and us know. And what you said earlier, it is $30 a month for access if you want to pay monthly and subscribe. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's another option. If you aren't paying for a full class, you can still access the cyber range, which is great. Um. Meta CTF really does test the individual exploits. Yeah, definitely. I, there, there has been some challenges where maybe you have to do like a little bit more. Um, granted, I have not done a lot of the hard challenges yet. So I, I thought it was really interesting before my pen testing role. You hear a lot like if you're if you're trying to get a job like pen testing um, or maybe you're interested in bug bounty. I don't know. Um, a lot of people tell you that hack the box or um, 
trihackme or these like CTFs are very are different than what you're doing in a uh, pen test, which I definitely agree with. I mean, it, it depends on what type of test you're doing, but majority of the time you're trying to act like see as many vulnerabilities as you can to give people a really good idea of, you know, what is potentially vulnerable in their environment. Um, but, you know, like hack the box, you really like go in depth and dive deep on one challenge, whereas like in a pen test, it's like, all right, do I spend a lot of time doing this? Because I'm sure you see YouTubers go through these uh, hack the box scenarios. And unless you're John Hammond, which I think he does some of those lives, which I think I would be terrified to do live um, for the first time. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a lot of times the, they do these challenges before they actually record the walkthrough video. So it can take a long time to complete those challenges and get those flags. And so if you're just starting out doing it, don't feel bad if that's the case, because that truly is a case for a lot of people. So um not everybody is like a wizard when it comes to <laughs> these challenges. Um, yeah. Uh, Pacific Red says, I think Wild West Hacking Fest also includes some access. That may be true. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. Wild West Hacking Fest, we actually transitioned to all the training is done through anti-siphon training now. And Wild West Hacking Fest is the conferences. Um, okay. So the conferences are are hosted by Wild West Hack and Fest, and then the training courses are hosted by Anti Siphon Training now. So it, it, we are pretty much the same company. We just uh, two different companies. So same, same, but different. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. What you said. Um, I am a complete beginner. What is the first thing I need to do slash install to follow and try this challenge? Um, I would recommend. If you have a hypervisor you already use to get a Kali um, VM image, if you don't have a hypervisor, um, it really depends on what operating system with the, I think VMware Workstation, I don't, I think you might need a license for that option, but you could do like a 30 day trial um, if you're on PC. I use VMware Fusion on my Mac. And so you can get started that way is just installing and getting like the Kali VM set up because that's already going to have all the tools you need um, and word lists you need pre-installed. Uh, is there a way to pay for the cyber range yearly? That was another question. I wasn't sure. Or is it just the $30 a month option? As of right now, we only have the $30 a month option. To be honest with you, I haven't looked to see if you can, you know, just select, I want to pay for a full year in advance. Um, so uh, but let me look right now. I'll mute myself and I'll look right now and I'll come back cool. on and let you know. Sweet. Um, I would start try hack me if you're a beginner. It walks you through it step by step, leaving nothing out. Um, some of the other beginner CTFs are really hard. That That's very good advice, and that is very true. Some of the hack-the-box challenges, even the beginner ones, I'm like, I have no clue. Um, but Try Hack Me really does have the step-by-step -step rooms and challenges to just at least understand, like, you know, if you're not familiar with Linux, maybe learning some of the Linux commands. Like, they, they have rooms for beginners that don't have anything to do with hacking. Like if you just need net, like basics of networking and stuff, but then we also have classes on anti-siphon too. So I like, I really like um, using all the resources available because that's another reason that I really like security is there's so many good free resources um, to use. And I feel like when I was going through school, especially with networking, there wasn't, a ton of free resources because it's not as fun, right? Like with with uh, CTFs, it's gamified. So you're like, oh, there's this cool challenge and like I get points and um, they're like fun challenges that are always kind of new. And um, with networking, it's not as glamorous. And so, you know, but if you do need like the basics of networking or something, there's there are a lot of um, 
resources. It's just not as fun. So you can't get as many people uh, to, to do it, right? Um, let's see. Try Hack Me will limit usage per day in the free account range. Oh, I did not know that. Obviously, I have not hit that limit yet, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but... Um, OG Captain Crunch says, it's been a while since I set up an account. Isn't there a challenge? Just, okay, so that there was. Hack the Box used to have um, a chat, like you couldn't even sign up for a, a an account unless you were able to find the flag on the website and use that to be able to sign up for your account. They don't have that anymore. They did take that away. So it was fun, but I think like even then the barrier of entry was probably a little bit too high for some. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they, they took it away. I thought it was cool, but I can understand like if you're like, I don't want to make a people <laughs> hack our website so that they can just sign up for an account. Um, yeah, Brian says, beginners, if you feel free, feel free to reach out to others you see in chats. This industry is 99.9% .9 ready and keen to help you. Yeah, everyone's really helpful, especially like if you're on our Discord. Um, and if you're not on it yet, I would recommend going and joining because it's a really great community. Um, sometimes you, at least me, I'll be afraid to kind of ask questions because I'm like, dang, like maybe this is something that I should already know. Um, but yeah you can have uh, a lot of supportive people. And, you know, sometimes I've learned that if you ask a question, someone probably already also has that question or maybe they've already asked it. Um, so the Discord is a really good community um, for people who are any level of the hacking spectrum. <laughs> um, so yeah, that would be a good thing. Does anybody else have questions? I think next week we will be going, I was, I almost told you what the challenge is, but then that would not be fair. Um, but you'll learn in a week uh, from now what, what challenge will be the next one. Uh, the Discord link. Let me see if I have that. Uh, da, 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 da. Someone might beat me to it. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. I haven't logged on. Okay. Depends it is on now, which Discord link. <laughs> yeah, I think the oh, well, I guess is the is the cyber range challenges in the anti siphon Discord or yes. okay. And that is going to be discord.gg slash anti siphon. All lowercase. Cool. I'll put it in chat. Sweet. Hopefully. Plus sweet memes, haircut fish. Yeah, we do memes there too. <laughs> uh, yes, so if you're looking for a Linux platform that already has uh, John the Ripper installed, the one that I was using is Kali. I think there's another one called uh, Parrot OS, which I think is pretty good for like beginner beginners too, um, because you can actually it gives you more information about what each application does which can can be helpful um but yeah so i think linux is, is gonna be probably the more common version that you would come across though i think and then i i know there's some testers that don't even use linux and they just install the uh tools that they use and they know exactly what they want to use i'm still new i'm trying to like try all of the things so that i can kind of have my preferences um so yeah nice already in the bhis chat apparently awesome yeah we do uh we do other fun stuff in there too aside from the cyber range and memes um they i think you know we do some streams for job hunting jason likes to do those or linkedin reviews so yeah cool all right, last call for questions. And then I have to go back on a test. But if there's any other questions, I can answer those before I go. Um, 
But yeah, so check out the discords if you're not already in there. Like I said, this will be on the YouTube page after. Um, and yeah, you can also leave questions on the YouTube comments too. So, all right. I think we're good. I don't think I see any other questions in the chat. So Jason, you can kill it as the other Jason right. would say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm killing it in three. Right. Two, Bye everyone. <laughs> one. Bye everybody.